The church was busy this week, in case you're wondering. We were in three different schools during this week. Uh, it's called Teacher Appreciation Week. And uh, we got a last minute message just saying, hey, would you even consider uh, looking at our school? And we said, well, I guess we could. And, and it was a school that I'd never heard of right here in Decatur called the uh, Social Emotional Learning Academy. How many of you guys have heard of that one? Uh, they, they said, we just get overlooked constantly. And uh, we were able to partner up, go in there, and make a meal for all their staff for the day and just let them know, you are appreciated for what you do. And they are serving kids and loving in them. And uh, I always tell them, I think being a teacher and working with kids is almost a, is considered a calling on your life because you don't get paid enough to deal with everything that sometimes come with it. And uh, it really is wonderful church that we were able to go in and, and do Parsons, Stephen Decatur Middle, and Sela uh, this last week and just continue to love. And uh, we look forward to more opportunities in the future. But uh, today we are here uh, to focus on the message at this point. And it's, today's title is Brave. Be Brave. Uh, let, let's just let's just do this. I'm a, I'm a good old teacher here. How many of you feel like you lack courage? Okay, some people are raising their hands. All right, here's a quick quick way of asking this: If you were asked to do something by your boss and you didn't want to, do you always have the courage to say no? Ah. Uh, and you're like, ah, okay. Are you afraid of the consequences of telling someone no? Mm, gets a little harder. I don't want to let people down. I don't know what they're going to think about me. What's going to happen? Uh, do you often find yourself worried? Do you find yourself scared in life and sometimes just burdened? Well, let me tell you, the Bible wants us to be brave. Uh, for those of you that, that know uh, your Disney movies like I do, and i got to keep Jerry happy by keeping my movie references going, the first thing I thought of was Myrda. I say, who's Myrda? Get some culture, go watch Disney Brave, and it's absolutely amazing. My little girl's obsessed with her. She, that's the reason why she has a bow and an arrow and runs around the yard and, and shoots random objects because she is a fierce warrior girl. And uh, you, you gotta have one. I have two that are like that and, and one that is somewhere, I don't know. She's the girly girl who gets the acrylic nails and all the other, and the other ones are like, Dad, we're digging in the dirt. But the Bible tells us to be brave. If you have your Bibles, please open to 2 Timothy. I do have the scripture ready for us on the screen, but I always love for you to follow along in your Bible so you can see the passage in full if you choose to. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And it reads like this. I'm sorry. I used to do sword drills back in the day, so I was very fast with that. How many guys remember sword drills? Yeah, you even had the cheaters. You better hold it like this. You can't hold it like this and thumb through. Yep. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospels according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Let's pray here. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you to be with this service. Father, we ask that you continue to lead and encourage every soul in here. So, Father, be with the junior church service as they are in the back there, Lord, as they continue to hear uh, of your goodness, of your love, of the power of the cross, and everything you have for them when they accept Christ. Father, we ask that you be with the teachers. We thank you for our nursery volunteer serving. Father, may the Spirit in here close off the thoughts of the world and just focus on your word for the next half hour. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Being brave is not an easy thing for any of us to do. Earlier I was 
talking about boo-boos and ouchies. And there are certain things that I personally am just not brave about. I used to donate blood. Anyone donate blood in here? A few people. I used to give double red platelets. <clears throat> I don't know. And they'd have the needle in, and it was a big, bigger needle, and I had no problem until one day I had a non-loving, caring individual who just decided that I should just be used to this, and they decided just to, you know, one, two, three, whoosh. And I was like, oh, I wasn't ready. And, and, and those of you who get things, uh, you know, all of a sudden it changes you. You're, you're fearful every time they say they have to draw blood. Who's scared of getting the blood drawn? I no longer like that. I'm never just like, you're weird that you liked it. It didn't bother me before, but now I am like terrified if you're going to draw blood for me because they stuck the needle in wrong and it wiggled all weird and made me hurt and it hurt my feelings. And, and now they always check your blood pressure. You know, they're like, do the heart thing. And they say, are you okay? Be like, no, I'm not okay. Like, this is, this is not good. Like, there's no reason for you to suck the blood out of my life. I'm fine. And, 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 and I, I'm not brave. And we get scared in life. There are a lot of things that cause us to have fear. There's, uh, I don't like getting my blood drawn. Um, when planes, I have no problem flying. I get nervous as we're landing. You say, why? <laughs> Do the math. Uh, 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 there's a lot more fear when you come landing than there is when you're already up in the sky. Uh, that's a lot of weight and energy hitting the ground on a wheel. And, and you're like, okay. And it's like, it, it just like, it tense up a little bit. You say, why, what happened? I flew Spirit Airlines. That's what happened. Um, those of you who know, you know. Who's ever flown Spirit before? Okay, you know. And, and uh, you do these different things and journeys and, and, and you have natural fears. But then I have other fears. And I actually, I still get nervous being up here. I don't know about you guys, but this is terrifying. Um, some of you don't know uh, what your face looks like when you sit. Okay. <laughs> Some of, some of you older men have a frown that just, 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 just rests. It's okay. Uh, but uh, it's, it's scary because you say, I'm supposed to represent the creator and how good and amazing and loving and forgiving he is and bring that down to make sure that I am a witness of God's goodness to people. And this is a great responsibility. But yet... If you start getting and thinking about fear and everything we're scared of, it can cripple you as a person. Uh, it's not an appropriate movie, but growing up, you realize this as you get older. For some reason, you just watch things. There, there was a movie called What About Bob? And my dad had us, I know, we're all sinners in here together. Well, we got forgiveness, okay? Uh, the whole thing was called Baby Steps. And they would say, what are you scared of? And he would list everything he's scared of that he wasn't able to do anything. And he'd be like, well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go to the bathroom and there's no restroom around. Be like, I've been there. We've all lived that fear. I'm afraid, you know, that I'm going to stop breathing. You know, he'd just go through. But you can't stop living life because you're fearful. We can get fearful and to the point that you never leave your home or you never touch anything. You never live life anymore. And the problem is many believers nowadays are living in fear. And the Bible tells us to literally not have fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we want to move out. So today I'm going to do an acronym. And I don't do this very often. That means every letter is going to stand for different things. This is some uh, things. I do this in Sparkies. And the first one is B. We need to believe God is who he says he is. We need to believe that God is who he says he is. Uh, who is Jesus Christ? Who is the one? Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. We have to stop looking to ourselves to answer our problems. I, I, I don't know about you, but I've been working, trying to make progress in my yard because it's the spring weather, and it's very slow progress. And I run out of energy. I run out of energy uh, of just doing the backbreaking work and trying to clean and do everything as well as the kids running around. And, and the kids are an exhausting part of working in your yard because you're like, please don't trip. Please don't jump over that. Please stop playing with the water. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to move dirt and it's heavy and the shovel doesn't want to go through because it keeps hitting rocks. And I, I've been sweating 
the kids are making fun of me. I took my glasses off and they saw my white line because of my son, my tan already. I'm exhausted and I'm ready to go in and, and just relax at night. And yet God literally created everything we see in the earth and in the stars and the galaxies in six days. I am limited at how far I can do. There are times, and this is, I, I am not a model husband, okay? Don't look. I tell my wife, honey, I love you. I need the abridged version of this story, not every single detail. Okay? You say, that's, that's, that's not a good way of talking to your wife. There are times that if we were to sit there for the entire thing, I don't think I'd make, I'd stay awake. I, I, like, I would just fall asleep. And, and, and he says, she's boring? No, I just fall asleep. Because it just, I'm like, I just need the thing. But God says, oh, no, 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 no. In everything, come to me. I never grow tired of your prayer request. I never grow tired of you talking to me. I never grow tired of you seeking after me. I never grow tired of being with you. I don't need rest. I don't need sleep. I don't have to take a break. I am in all things and through all things, and by me all things exist. So one of the first things we realize is we need to believe in God, and we have to stop looking to the world for help. Uh, the prophet Isaiah writes to the children of Israel because Israel, they were looking everywhere except for God and he, he prophesies and says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. We need to believe that God is who he says he is. We need to stop looking to the things of the world, stop looking to ourselves, because let me tell you, uh, the internet and, and websites need breaks, don't they? We ran into a whole issue this week with our, with our sign because they had to do a maintenance update on the internet and it shut everything down. And then we had to update our modem this week and it shut everything else down. And then we had to do this. But, you know, God says, just look to me. Stop looking at things of the world. Uh, the government is trying to raise the debt ceilings and God's like, you know, the thing that you call precious metals I made I, I don't even work on a currency like that. I, I work on faithfulness, and I am faithful and true. We have to stop looking to the world and only looking to God. I'm going to run out of time here. The next letter is letter R. Refuse to listen to the voices of doubt. Do you have any voices of doubt in your life? You're like, ooh, we're not even... We're not, yeah, yeah. Let's look what the Bible says. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus speaking says, I am come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. You see, the, the thief, the world, the one who, who tears you apart is come to bring about your destruction. Now, this is a cell phone. How many of you have a smartphone? Okay, is there anyone in this room who doesn't actually, an adult that doesn't have a copy or a type of smartphone? Is anyone using a flip phone? Anyone get a jitterbug? Right, you know, they call them the flip bug or whatever they call those. Big keys, okay. They have these apps on here that are social media type apps and YouTube. All right, you guys, I know YouTube. I, I got you, Pastor. We know YouTube. The problem is, is they start leading you towards like self-help things. And the next thing, they'll be like, if you want to diet and exercise, you stick with me for the next 20 days, and you'll be a mean, lean, green fight machine. You know, and they go through things, and they'll start kind of correcting you, and you're like, man, how come I'm not exercising like I'm supposed to? How come I'm not cleaning my house? Because it's only seven days to, to clean your house to perfection, and it's every single room gets one trash bag. And why am I not gardening like this person? Why am I not mowing my yard as nice as this guy is? What is he doing that's different from me? How come I can't manage? my finances because this guy says you can get rich in 30 you know in two years by doing this and that and it doesn't make sense and we have all these voices coming at us and then if you have kids in school the emails from the school there's a lot of emails the school sends I don't even know what they say I miss Tina I'll be honest I delete them I, I maybe look at the title of the message and if it doesn't sound relevant it's gone. And then there's a church who sends out text messages and emails. And then there's people. There's all these voices coming at you. And it can pull you down in life. 
It can hurt you. Some of you have lived with some bad voices in your life, and some of them, I will be honest, have come from your own parents that have hurt you or brought you down or told you you're not going to make it or do things. One of the reasons why I enjoy sports movies or overcomer movies is because I, I hear sometimes the people who were negative towards them, and I see them not use that to bring themselves down, but they move forward beyond that. Because there's a lot of voices in our life. You know what Jesus says there in John chapter 10 as he's talking? He then goes on to talk about sheep. And he says, the sheep, I I know the sheep and the sheep know my voice. You know, God loves us and he wants us to listen to his voice. The voice of the world pulls you for their own gain. Jesus calls you that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Why would you not listen to someone who truly wants better for you? There's voices we care about. We care about the voice of others, the voice of ourselves, and then we have the voice of the enemy who truly doesn't want you to succeed in this world. Sadly, there are people out there who just don't want good for you. And you say, why would they be that way? They have a sin issue where they are now filled with anger and hatred. But let me tell you, Jesus says, I want to give you life. And I want to give you eternal life through me. I want to give you life more abundantly. And how did he do that? But through the cross. He died on the cross and says, I'm not just a man of words. I'm a man of action that whosoever believeth in me. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. The letter A The letter A, ready? Align yourself with God's word. Align yourself with God's word. And I find this very important. I bet you if I started this verse, you could probably quote it. Because we say it a lot around here. Psalms 119, 105 starts with, Thy word, anyone know the rest of it? Is a lamp unto my feet. Say it with me, ready? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And when we do our Awana pledges, we pledge allegiance to the Bible and it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, Why be a God? You're right, the pledge says God. Uh, But until we align ourselves with God's word, we continually will stumble through life. My mom... I have two moms, in case you want. I have one down in Texas and one in Michigan. My family is divorced, and they both have remarried, and, and uh, both of them are my moms. I, I've lived with them. Uh, they, my one, whew, she, she was my, uh, hit me at sixth grade, my smelly stage of life. And, and uh, she'd say it still hasn't ended, but let me tell you, now that I have some teenage boys, where's, where, where, I have teenage boys in my house, and there is a perpetual smell from one section of the house, and uh, not you, you're like, no, man, it's just axe, axe everywhere, Uh, but uh, we can't get rid of it, but she was with me, and she's my mom, and she says, hey, I want to challenge you to run a a half marathon this year with me, and so we started running, and and trying to find time to run doesn't always there. The other day, I did at night. It was wonderful. It was nice and cool. Not last night. I almost died. It was nice and cool. And and, and we were running, but it was nighttime. It was dark. And I didn't have a headlight or anything on. And you got to understand, I am overweight. And I sweat a lot. So my glasses are fogging. And and I tripped and stepped on cracks and a few things about three different times. And every time I could feel my ankle do that little thing, you know what I'm talking about, where you're like, I'm going to break it or sprain it. And I would recover and be like, just keep moving. I'd be like, thank you, Lord, like in the middle of the street. Thank you, Lord, because I have sprained my ankle. But I couldn't see where I was going. I knew where I wanted to go, but you couldn't see. A couple years ago, my son and I, we went camping at Friends Creek, and it was July, and it was firefly season. And we had some flashlights, and he wanted to turn it off. And we couldn't really see the path. But every once in a while, there's a really neat term for it, but I'm not that smart. The fireflies all get in sync, and they all light up at the same time. And we would walk, and all of a sudden it'd get dark, and we'd say, just wait, buddy. And then about eight seconds later, the whole forest would light up, and then we'd be able to go. You know, a lot of us feel like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know the next steps. I don't know what's happening, because you don't. Walk with the Lord to have a light unto your path. 
You don't know God's plan for your life because you're not walking with God. Uh, God's word, until we align ourselves with God, we will continue to stumble. God's word will help direct your steps and set you on the right path and ensure that we are going in the right direction of life. And here's the other word, according to his purpose. It's one thing to, to have a light. It's another thing to be able to actually see. Headlights have gotten really confusing to me in the last couple of years because there are some headlights that are so bright I think they're a danger to be that bright on the road because I'm like, I can't see. I'm going to need some surgery for my eyes. I need that little filter or something. But I rode in one of those cars recently that had the really nice headlights. And my goodness, you can see everything. And, and, and I tell you, the more that you're in God's plan, the more that you're reading God's word, the more that you're praying to God, the more that you're asking him to guide your steps, the more... Sure, you are the path you're on. The more you can see that God maketh everything work together for good. You say, but it hurts in that moment, and sometimes the, the pain, I said, the pain is real, but you can see God's got a plan. Before the foundation of the world was laid, the lamb was slain. God's like, I'm going to create man in my image. And he's like, I already know man's going to sin because I'm above everything and through all things. And I can see in the end and everything was going to go. And I'm going to make sure that man has a way for restoration because I will love you that much. We can't see that sometimes when we're, when we're walking in the dark. This building right here gets very dark. I don't know if you noticed, there's not a single window in this room. And I leave things all around the church. And I will have to come back in here after we turn the lights off. And I will walk this pathway right here. And I will use any light I can to try to walk. And, and it gets harder and harder sometimes with the steps. If, especially if I leave my phone in here. I can't even use a light on there. And we're trying to walk. And I, you, say, you could turn the lights on. But that causes, that's work. To go up the steps turn lights on. You know, I'd rather just risk it and see how tough I am. But doesn't that sound like our spiritual life? But pastor, it's work to read my Bible and ask God to guide my steps. But wouldn't it be so much easier just to read that passage to ask him, Lord, would you guide me today? Would you lead me instead of me leading myself? Could I glorify you instead of me trying to do it my own? Because often when I walk in here, I get to somewhere right about here and I'll run into one of these pews or my foot will hit this step so hard that I almost fall. And, and, and what's going to happen is you're going to keep stumbling and then as soon as we stumble, as soon as we fall, we don't look in the mirror. We say, God, why did you let that happen? As a parent, <clears throat> I said, not a model parent. Okay, not a model parent. My kids will do things. And I will say, don't, don't you yell at me. You're not even supposed to be out of bed. How did you hit your head on that way over here on the other side of the room? You're supposed to be in bed. This is your fault, not mine. <laughs> Last night, my little girl, uh, Ellie May, okay, sweet little Ellie. Miss Brenda's not here to yell at me later, so I'll say it. She hit her head on something, and she tried to cry and say, well, Daddy, you didn't. I said, uh-uh, don't you dare play the victim in here. You are the one who got out of bed. You were in bed 30 minutes. I had my watch in. Uh, you should be asleep already. You are. And, and we fall and we hit ourselves and we hurt. And, and we know that God had a plan. God said, I chose you. I told you to use soft answers, not angry answers. But it just felt right. Maybe you don't believe in yourself. You believe in God instead of yourself and trust God's plan over it. But I was angry. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. The Bible tells that husbands to love your wives as Christ loved the church. And, and you realize, parents, don't provoke your children under wrath. You're like, what? I just... But what? You just want to walk in the flesh or walk in the spirit? See, when we line ourselves up with God, things are different. You see, everything's going to work out perfectly according to his plan, not ours. Let me tell you that. V, I'm getting out of time here. Value who God created you to be. In Psalms 139, a verse the kids memorized last year of vacation Bible school, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. I love Psalms 139, and it is one of the passages I love to look at over and over again when I am having doubts in my life, when I'm having struggles, because it reminds me that God has always known me, that God says that he has created us and known us, and that you were created on purpose for a purpose. Your life is not an accident. You are important. You are loved. You are valued. So much that God left his throne on heaven, came to earth and dwelt among us, and allowed himself to go to the cross. As the Bible tells us in Corinthians, it says that he which knew no sin became sin. And he bore the sins of our transgression upon himself. And he died on that cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day, though, he rose again. Jesus says many things. He says, I am the living water. I'm the bread of life. And one of them, again, he says, I am the resurrection. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You listen to these phrases and you realize that only through Christ is there salvation. How many people are willing to give up that much luxury, that much power to do this? I know it wouldn't be you. You say, well, how do you know that? Because I've heard some of you get a little frustrated and be like, I know your manager. You would call the boss so fast if you were in a pickle like that, if you knew them. If you had the power to get people terminated when they are wrongfully pursuing after you, most of us would. You say, that's not a fair assumption to make. Are you kidding? We are human beings. If we know when someone is mistreating us and we could somehow fix it, we would. Uh, and why? Because we've all been wronged at some place. In the store, at a restaurant, at jobs, in places. Uh, how many of you have, have ever had a grandkid tell on their parents to you? Okay, they think they're going to management. They're like, we're going to man. We're going to get grandma involved in this or grandpa, and, and we're going to get dad on our side or things like that. Why? Because we always go. But yet Jesus Christ, who says all power is given unto me, doesn't call the army of angels to his defense doesn't bring down fire from heaven, doesn't strike the earth with lightning, doesn't make them to all fall down on their knees in his presence. So why do you use those reference? Because in the Old Testament, Mount Carmel, Elijah calls and prays down fire. Again, when they try to arrest him, they send down lightning and they, they kind of burn there on the spot in the Old Testament as well. Uh, again, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says, I am he, and they fell down on their faces. Some people say they fell backwards or they fell into worship. It doesn't matter. They fell at his name. And yet Jesus, when he goes to the cross, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. You say, what kind of purpose does, does God have for me? So what kind of value does he have so much that his only begotten son died on the cross for you? What other purpose? So much that while he died, he said that you might have life and you might have life more abundantly, that now you can become a child of God. I grew up in a church, and where's, where's Miss Melissa? She's back there. Hey, Miss Melissa, Miss Tina, you ready? Well, we called everyone brother and sister. How many grew up in a church that was like that? Okay, I wasn't allowed to call anyone mister. You had to say, that's not Mr. Shires, that's brother, brother Rich right there. And that's not Mr. Deal, that's brother Deal. And that's not sister, uh, that's not Miss, Mrs. Dunn, that's sister Sharon. And, and, and how many you guys say, talk that way? Say, why? Because in God's eyes, he says, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we become part of the family of God, which is why we had to sing that song back in the day, I'm so glad I'm a part, we had to sing, with the family of God, and we'd sing that song over and over, and the choir would get up, and they'd be like, oh, I'm so glad, and they would do that, why, because 
We are so valued that God says, I don't just love you. I just don't want to just forgive you. I want to make you my child. And you are then heirs of the kingdom of God. You have an inheritance in me. God loves us. Let me tell you, uh, a church is a place where you can always learn of the value that God has in you. Once we are in God's word and he is directing us, we see that many of the lies the world tells us to keep us down yet, uh, don't, aren't true. Yet God sees you as precious, as his child, as someone he has known before your parents even met. He made you with the purpose and desires for us to abide in Get ready to close here soon. I told my wife I'd be done early today with all the activities. Is E, eliminate the comfort zone. Now, I, I chose that letter today on Mother's Day instead of Father's Day because I know that ain't happening for you men. All right? You all have your chair, your special spot on the couch. Uh, some of you even have a chair at the kitchen table that is designated, that's my spot. Once you get comfy, that's what it is. Uh, we have uh, our own spots on the bed, but we need to eliminate the comfort zone. I chose this verse, 2 Peter 3.18. It says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. What does it mean to grow? And one of the words on our little motto says, We want to gather, we want to grow, and we want to glorify. We gather like this. We grow by hearing the word of God like we have is the start of growth. But growing is uncomfortable. Growing can sometimes be hard. Say, so, yeah, what do you mean by that? Uh, my wife wanted the full Mother's Day royal treatment this year, uh, which means we're not taking seven kids out to eat. We want to enjoy the day. Uh, we, we bought plants. How many of you have bought plants for yourself or for a mother or something else like that? And the thing about plants is you can't, if you're doing it right, you don't just pop them out of that thing and throw them in the ground. You have to uh, roll it a little, get ready to get those roots out of there. You don't want them to be soaking wet because you don't want a goopy mess. And you, and you got to dig a hole. And sometimes when you're digging that hole, you got to find the rocks and everything else like that. And, and, and you got to uh, massage the roots, right? How many guys massage? You're like, oh my goodness, this is more than I do. And, and, and you massage the roots. And then if you're, you're really good, what you did about three or four days prior to even planting... You ready? Is you put some fertilizer in that area in advance and you watered it in so it soaked into the ground. I did that in case you're wondering. So the ground had all these nice nutrients in there. And, and then you, you, you put this poor plant that you just randomly plucked from a store because it looked healthy. And, and you put it into the ground. And you think, there. Now grow. But a lot's going to happen with that plant you see those roots have got to dig down and it's got to push through soil. And, and it's got to push around stones and little gravel and other root systems. And, and it's got to get rooted into the ground. And think about rooted into the ground as we already talked about rooted into the word of God and align yourself with God's word and believe who God says. We, we're putting ourselves in God's first. And as it grows, it starts to grow taller, too. And occasionally, when you have a plant, you have to get out your shears. And you, what do you have to do? You have to prune it. I got something called knockout roses. Those of you who know your roses, knockout roses will produce hundreds of roses a season as long as you deadhead them. And you say, well, you got to go over and cut them off, cut them off. And, and it'll keep producing. And it seems painful. It's not good. You're like, you're going to hurt the plant. And please don't invite my kids over to water. They will drown your plants. But uh, you got to do and take care of it. And this plant grows. It's a lot of energy to grow. You have to constantly feed it and water and be uh, getting enough sunshine and pray it doesn't drown out. And, and my farmers know what I'm talking about over here because we have to grow. But for whatever reason, we don't want to live the Psalm 1 life anymore. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it, 
Does he meditate day and night? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. You see, the Bible says that we are supposed to be fruit-bearing individuals, that we're supposed to be producing love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, patience, not the works of the flesh. And that causes every once in a while, some of the, the hardest things we do is keeping our mouth shut. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> it's just, it was on point, though. I agree. That would have been amen right there, okay? Uh, keeping our mouth shut is so hard to do. Or, or for me, every once in a while, it's hitting that backspace button on my, on my phone, okay? Uh, I have written more text messages that I haven't sent and it's probably saved me a job or two, okay? Because I'm like, let me tell you how I really feel about this. And then if I'm really, I will just speak it because I can't even type fast enough. Let me just tell you, you know, just because I'm like, I need to delete that. Emails that have gone missing. Uh, computers have shut down miraculously because God loves me. He's like, you don't need to send that. Let's just delete that today. Uh, uh, why? Uh, sometimes it's being uncomfortable and God says, let me correct you. Sometimes... We have to listen no, sometimes. All the time, we need to start listening to the Holy Spirit. All the time, we need to be aligned with God's Word. All the time, we need to be planted by the rivers of life. And who is that but Jesus Christ? Everything is going to point to Jesus Christ because without Him, we can do nothing. It is only through Jesus Christ that we can have forgiveness of sins. It is only through Jesus Christ that we can have newness of life. And it is only through Jesus Christ that we can truly experience the living waters. As the Bible says in Revelation, the Spirit and the church says, Come unto me, all who are athirst. Let me tell you, if you find yourself in want, if you find yourself hungry, if you find yourself desiring more, today is a day to be brave and come to Jesus. We are intended to grow. So why do we try not to? Planting is very important. And if you're not careful, my wife, we had to go buy more, this is expensive too, uh, pots. Because if you have a plant with a root system. You need to be in the right size pot planter or straighten the ground so there's lots of dirt. You know, some of us, we have shrunk our lives down and say, I, I can't look outside, I can't look anywhere else. It's just in my own little world. I don't need church, I don't need others, I don't need to think about other believers. I, I love other people, I love my family. My family is my ministry, you are correct. God calls us to be family, but God also tells us to look towards others. A and you think you're growing okay, but you're actually never reaching your full potential because you haven't looked outside. Well, what does a church or a community help you do? It starts us look outside and say, hey, look, Look, there's some teachers here who are really discouraged. Let's come beside them and love them. Hey, look, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the $10,000 we're giving out this month, this week actually, we're meeting with the financial committee that we set aside to love our community. And we say, there's some people down at the shelter that could really use some money. Let's go be Jesus to them. And we're saying, oh my goodness, we need to look outside of our home, outside of our life, and look at our community, look at our world, and continue to realize how deep and how big we can grow when we are brave. And lastly, I'll say this, we will struggle with growth always if we are not in Christ. I want to challenge you today to live life brave. What does that mean? I want you to believe that God is who he says he is. I want you to refuse to listen to the voices of doubt. I want you to align yourself with God's word, the Bible. I want you to value who God created you to be, and I want you to eliminate the comfort zone and think about growing in Christ. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, with every head bowed and eyes closed, Lord, we just come to you knowing that you are amazing, that you created us, Lord, that you have instilled so much into us that you value us and you created us with a purpose. Father, we ask that every person in here would be challenged with the desire to grow in you. With every head bowed,